This is for anyone looking to put a inverter and battery, there's the battery, onto a hand truck, kind of make a portable large 110 volt power supply. Uh, so this is EG4, I got this from Signature Solar, same thing for the battery. The battery's are decent, I have experience with those. The inverter, not so much, but this inverter is like a, been made for a while, everybody puts their name on it, inverter. You can find it with a bunch of different names. The advantage to getting the EG4 is it's about the same price as the others from Signature Solar and other places too, but you'll do, uh, you get five years on the warranty then when you're pairing it with an EG4 battery. Anyway, here's the things you'll need to do. I went with wood instead of going with Unistrut because Unistrut to attach this onto the hand truck with Unistrut is, Unistrut alone is like 35 bucks, uh, unless you can steal it from work. I grabbed a piece of plywood, I think that's like 19 by 24, and then attached it with three quarter clamps. I don't have any here to show you, but they're already on the back of that. So three quarter, the, they're saddle clamps. So they're clamped with uh, uh, a screw on one side and the other. Anyway, once that's secure, and then this just gets secured with four screws, use like three quarter inch screws and they'll just tighten up. Same thing, two more there and there. Okay, once you got that on, you're gonna need something to connect the battery. I went with uh, this from Amazon, one aught, and it was a red and black pair, and they're two feet long. I tried going with the 18 inch, it didn't make it. It was just a little bit too tight. So two feet gives you a little bit of slack, but that's how it is. So that'll ultimately connect to the top two terminals of the battery, which goes right here. Anyway, other things to hook up. There's a PV1 and a PV2. So there's actually two uh, solar panel banks that you can fill. I'm only using one, but I wired the second one just in case. And what you're gonna do is pick up a bunch of this. This is 10 gauge wire. It's 10 gauge solar wire. I think it has a little bit more UV protection. And get a bunch of the ends. It's pretty easy to put the ends on. And I made one nice and long, like seven foot long. And that I ran to PV1, and that's what I'll mostly be using for solar. And the PV2, I put two little stubs on, so in a pinch, if I ever wanted to use a second bank, I've got it. So for the this 10 gauge, I bought like 80 foot of each. And that'll also let me make extension cords that can run outside to the solar array. That's the AC in. And all I did is I went and got a, a 20 amp surge strip, cut the wire off once I... So I cut the wire off the surge strip once I had enough to make it here and a little bit of spare because something always goes wrong. And then the balance of it, which is about 10 feet, is my AC in. So at the end of this is a plug. I can plug that into the wall and charge my batteries if I wanted to, if there was no solar around. So that, that gives me another option. The AC out, which I still have to wire in, is going to go to a surge strip on the back of this unit. Other things to know, things to watch out for, don't really reef on those because they're just not that strong. All this crap's made in China. It comes with these, which I think is pretty sweet. They're usually a, you know, a buck or two each. And that's all it is. It's gonna close up, there's a little rubber grommet in there and it makes it somewhat watertight. They don't have to go crazy because as you can see, there's plenty of venting to let water in if you wanted to. Um, it comes with small, medium, and large ones. The small ones ended up going with the PV. Mediums were for the uh, 110 in and out, and the large ones were for the battery. You have to clip a little bit of the metal here, and it's designed for that in order for these large ones to fit in here. There's another little box that comes off this in order to make it U, um, UL compliant. They say you have to put the box on. It's like a little extender box. Doesn't seem to do much, but fulfill some some letter of the law thing. The only problem is if I put the little box on and then put these grommets on, it's too far down here and then the battery doesn't fit. So I bailed on that. And the instructions say you don't have to use that box. The only real pain in the ass to watch out for is these. There's just, as you can see, not a lot of room to get in there with your hands. So uh, make sure you wire these before you do a lot of the other stuff. That way it gives you more room to work. I took the battery off in order to slide these in. I just slid them in one at a time, and now I still have to tighten this up. And that's it.